Hey, Doc Steph here, and thank you for tuning into the Caregivers Chronicles Unveiled. In this episode, we're going to talk about caregiving for difficult relationships. Yes, you know, navigating the caregiving landscape is multifaceted, defined by dedication, compassion, and undeniable sense of responsibility. While caregiving is rooted in acts of love and support, it is essential to acknowledge that the path is rarely linear, particularly in complex or strained relationships. In this episode, we embark on a candid exploration of the intricate world of caregiving within complicated relationships where emotions, expectations, and challenges converge, intensifying the already demanding role of caregiving. Within the realm of caregiving, we often find ourselves facing um, familial um, dynamics, unresolved conflicts, and underlying tensions. This episode seeks to illuminate the unique challenges that caregivers encounter, such as the delicate balance between vulnerability and strength. We discuss um, the impact of caregiving on individuals, explaining both the emotional and practical dimensions, all while exposing the resilience that flourishes when confronting the elaborate nature of care within challenging relationships. So one compelling facet we will examine is caregiving for individuals with whom we share a history of strained relationships. This dynamic introduces complex challenges that can significantly um, influence every element of the caregiving role. Um, it is not uncommon for caregivers to anticipate or hope for a, tra a transformed relationship by extended care. However, this can also subtle, um, subtly um, reflect a desire for validation or approval, marking yet another layer of intricacy to the experience. As we dig deeper, we will focus on the uncharted territory of caring for loved ones who might have caused us pain or mistreatment in the past. So let's plunge into these narratives, steering the emotional intricacies, unraveling coping strategies, and unveiling the transformative potential of caregiving with complicated relationships. Now, that you understand our discussion on caregiving within complex relationships, let's get started with the first, um, the first point. Resurfacing emotion is going to just jump right into it. Caring for a parent accentuates the relationship we had growing up. If the relationship were loving and nurturing growing up, the adult child desires to give their parents what they need and caring becomes easy. On the other hand, if the relationship was dysfunctional or problematic, those feelings resurface and caring becomes a burden instead a burden instead of a blessing. It is that moment of emotional numbness that we repeatedly replay in our minds that hinders the act of morality. This means that the loved one has not changed over years. Their treatment toward us remains the same as when we were a child. Often, we harvest the idea of seeking their approval by doing all we can to make them proud of us or appreciative, all the while feeling obligated to care for them, even when the demands are overwhelming. So resurfacing um, emotions refer to reawakening of feelings that were once buried or dormant, but are brought back to the surface, the surface in the complexities of providing care. When caring for someone with whom we had a strained relationship, it is not uncommon for past emotions and unresolved conflicts to rise to the surface. These emotions can be like fragments of the past intertwined with our present efforts to provide care and support. Um, they can shape out into actions, influence our decisions, and sometimes even cloud our intentions. 
This can add emotional stress to the caregiving role as we grapple with um, past hurts while trying to fulfill our duties. Um, here's just some some things we um, in that you know. Um, so a the warmth of fond men memories resurfacing um, emotions are not solely negative. They can also include positive emotions tied to fond memories. Caregivers might find themselves reminiscing about shared experiences, moments of connections, and times when the relationship was more substantial. These positive emotions can add layers of complexity as caregivers reconcile their memories with the current dynamics of care. B, the weight of past conflicts. Ooh, excuse me, um, taking my time because this episode is really, really close to my emotions um, of, of caring for my loved one. So I'm going to get through this though because it needs to be heard. So um, B, the way to pass conflicts. Conversely, the resurgence of negative emotions associated with past conflicts, hurts, and misunderstandings can be particularly challenging. Um, these emotions might include anger, resentment, frustration, and even grief over what the relationship once was or could have been. The weight of these emotions can influence how caregivers approach their roles and decisions. C. Impact on present actions. Resurfacing emotions can profoundly influence how caregivers interact with their care recipients. Positive emotions might increase patience, understanding, and a desire to mend the relationship. On the other hand, negative emotions can create emotional barriers, um, affect communication, and even influence the quality of care provided. And D, navigating complexity. Caregivers often find themselves navigating a complex emotional landscape. They may need to balance the emotions tied to um, the history of the relationship with the immediate demands of caregiving. This delicate balancing act can impact the well-being of both the caregiver and the care recipient. So I want to give you um, <laughs> a case study of my experience, you know. Um, when my mother expressed her need for assistance, I hesitated due to the fear that our um, history might strain our relationship even further. I resided in Texas then, and she requested me to return home. Our relationship, both in my upbringing and, in, and into adulthood, had been far more, far, far from harmonious. While... Um, we could maintain conversations over the phone. Our in-person interactions often turned into heated conflicts. I perceived my mother as verbally um, abusive and demanding throughout my life, making the prospect of tending to her during her illness daunting. You know, as the youngest of her four children, I felt like I bore the brunt of her verbal abuse and demands for the most extended um, duration. Nevertheless, um, she was my mother, and I maintained our relationship despite the distance between us before her request. You know, I stepped into her caregiver role, carrying the weight of our complicated past. While um, I have had caregiving experiences with both my parents, one as a friend and the other as a challenging relationship, I want to focus on my experiences with my mother as they were the most trying. You know, it's important to remember that there are multiple perspectives to any story. My perception of my presence around her often translated into a palpable, uh, a palpable um, sense of her disapproval. Instances where she was staying at her bedroom door, casting her disdainful or disappointment glances, often accompanied by hurtful words, creating an environment of tension. It felt as though nothing I did was right. Um, and this was before she 
um, completely declined or um, cognitive decreased, it became even worse. You know, my mother had a tendency to be um, cantankerous and argumentative. Um, our views were in constant opposition. And seemingly, every topic could spark a disagreement. You know, what I label as booby traps were frequently set. Seemingly be benign conversations um, that were actually laden to provoke me. You know, these traps were designed to lead to explosive arguments where her, wor her words would be laced with cruelty and degradation. The conversations meant to foster connection were transformed into a battlefield well where I was emotionally wounded. This recurring um, pattern often, you know, left me reluctant to continue caregiving. The question arises, can forgiveness pave the way for releasing love, compassion, kindness, and understanding, even within such challenging relationships? Huh. Does our choice to become a caregiver hinge on a heartfelt apology from our loved ones or perhaps more profoundly, our capacity to forgive them. So amid caregiving duties, I grappled with an internal conflict that left me drained, despondent, and defeated. The caregiver role felt like being enlisted under an adversary's command, or so I believe. Yet the actual battle was waged within me, a war of emotions and um, conflicting thoughts that define my experience. You know, in caregiving, for someone with whom you had a strained relationship, it is vital to acknowledge the emotional complexity, seek support from therapists or support groups, and um, prioritize self-care. So in essence, resurfacing emotions exemplifies the web of history, emotions, and caregiving responsibilities when we care in complex relationships. These emotions remind us that our past experiences are not isolated from our present actions. You know, they shape the caregiving journey in profound and sometimes unexpected ways. But recognizing and addressing these emotions is crucial to fostering a more empathetic, understanding and holistic caregiving approach, potentially leading to reconciliation and healing. You know, um, a myriad of conflicts can significantly shape the caregiving experience involving resurgence of past emotions and unresolved conflicts, influencing both the caregiver and the care recipient. You know, historical communication barriers can hinder effective communication making it challenging to convey needs and concerns. The role reversal that often occurs when caregiving for someone with whom there's complicated history can create tension and discomfort, which, you know, we did all the time. Um, you know, for instance, we might grapple with guilt and obligations stemming from past issues, which can amplify the emotional burden of caregiving. You know, striking a balance between um, providing care and pres um, preserving emotional boundaries becomes a delicate feat, adding to the multifaceted nature of the role. Decision making from medical choices to daily routines can be complicated by lingering conflicts, potentially um, leading to disagreements. The emotional toll can substantially impact you know, our well-being due to the constant strain of navigating unresolved issues. So misaligned expectations between the care recipient and us can breed frustration, especially when the reality of caregiving does not match preconceived notions. You know, seeking support from friends and family might be difficult as hysterical, um, historical um, conflicts can strain these relationships. However, Amidst this complexity lies an opportunity for personal growth and healing. While caregiving 
within challenging presents numerous huddle, hur hurdles. Um, it can also pave the way for reconciliation, closure, and a deeper understanding of ourselves and the care recipient. Um, in these dynamics, we must exercise emotional intelligence, communication skills, and self-care practices to ensure the well-being of all parties involved. Um, so let's talk about the emotional and ethical dilemmas. We have explored the caregiving landscape within challenging relationships, and now let's turn our attention to a critical facet of this journey, um, the emotional and ethical dilemmas that caregivers often encounter when providing care for recipients with complex histories. Beyond the resurfacing of emotions and the conflicts we have discussed, caregiving can bring forth many profound dilemmas that test the fabric of our values, empathy, and decision-making. We, um, in these situations, often hap happen upon an emotional terrain where our past experiences intertwine with our present responsibilities. The complexities of caregiving can blur the lines between compassion and personal boundaries, duty and self-preservation, forgiveness and self-care. As we continue into the emotional and ethical dilemmas that unfold, we shed light on the deep human struggle we undergo when our roles intersect with unresolved relationships. How do we balance our own well-being with the needs of the care recipients? Um, when is it appropriate to set boundaries to protect ourselves from emotional harm? Is it possible to find a middle ground between duty and personal healing? What ethical considerations arise when caregiving requires confronting painful history? Okay, these dilemmas are at the core of our humanity. The capacity to extend compassion even in the face of past wounds and the courage to address difficult decisions while maintaining our integrity is difficult, it's, it's tough. Throughout this episode, we will draw from real life experience, my experiences, ethical principles and insights to illuminate the web of emotions and ethical considerations that define caregiving within um, these challenging relationships. So this is a little exhaustive, but not that much. So the first one is, we contend with prioritizing our own well-being versus meeting the care recipient's need. Finding the right balance between self-care and caregiving responsibilities can be emotionally challenging. Okay, the second one, um, we struggle to define and maintain emotional boundaries to protect ourselves from harm. The dilemma lies in preserving our mental health while fulfilling caregiving duties. Number three, the emotional dilemma of holding on to past resentment versus attempting to forgive and provide compassionate care can be profound. We may wrestle with our feelings towards the recipient while fulfilling our caregiving role. Number four, this one is huge. We might contend with the ethical obligation to provide care, especially um, if it's a family member versus our emotional well-being. This dilemma raises questions about the extent of the caregiver's responsibility. Number five, providing care for someone with a strained history might lead to revisiting unresolved conflicts. The emotional dilemma arises when these conflicts interfere with the caregiving process. Number six, making decisions about medical treatments, interventions, and the overall quality of care for the care recipient can be challenging. We might question if our decisions are influenced by our past relationship dynamics. Number seven, another considerable dilemma of feeling guilt and obligation to provide despite the complex history can be emotionally taxing. 
we may question whether we are motivated by a genuine desire to help or a sense of duty. Number eight, we may face the ethical dilemma of whether to endure emotionally taxing situations for the greater good or if stepping back for our own well-being is the more responsible choice. Number nine, <laughs> navigating the balance between honest communication and protecting the care recipient's emotions can be a dilemma. Caregivers might grapple with how much to share about our feelings and concerns. Number 10, ethical dilemmas around end of life decisions become more complex when dealing with complicated relationship because we might question whether our choices are influenced by their past, by, by our, our past history or by the best interests of the care recipient. Number 11, the dilemma between engaging in personal growth through forgiveness and healing versus prioritizing self-preservation by setting emotional boundary presents us with tough choices. And number 12, um, the decision to seek external support for ther from therapists, support groups, or other caregivers can be met with conflicting emotions. We might struggle with admitting we need help in acknowledging the impact um, of past conflicts. So it's a conversation that, that dwells into the heart of caregiving, where empathy, personal growth, and ethical contemplation intertwine to shape the path forward. So um, I will explain this through my experience of emotional and moral dilemmas and give you the um, revelation I received through the discovery process. So in my journey of caregiving, my mother, for my mo caregiving for my mother, the battles I fought within were marked by invisible scars hidden, hidden from the eyes of others. You know, I wrestle with the intricate interplay of moral obligation and ethical duty, a conflict that left me with what I can only describe as a moral or spiritual, spiritual injury. Unseen wounds pose a challenge in terms of diagnosis as they take the form of a moral injury, an emotional state marked by a sense of um, existential disorientation that gives rise to overwhelming guilt. It is akin to a spiritual crisis that befalls a tormented soul. Allow me to share my story and you will gain insight into my profound internal um, dilemma. These insights are drawn from the pages of my book, Caregiving for the Enemy. Okay, so let's begin. In the face of opposition, I stood on the premise that respect begets respect. The abuse of role or authority of a person or family member should not give them the right to mistreat or make another feel um, insignificant. The Bible tells us, do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than others, than yourselves. That comes out of Philippians 2, verse 3. So, God created and made all people differently for reasons and pur purposes we may not understand. Regardless of how we perceive other people to be, they are God's creations, and it's God's will for us to show respect to everyone. It is easy for hurt people to continue the cycle of hurting other people. Whether they, they realize it or not, people um, stuck in a mindset of hurt tend to wrap a code, around, code of protection around themselves to tight, so tightly that all they see is themselves. But if everyone hurts in the same way, how do we stop the cycle of hurting others? Jesus gives us this instruction. Do to others as you would have them do to you. That's in Luke 6, 31. This is the final directive of two believers. To love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, and to bless those who curse us. Treating others the way we would want to be treated is a divine characteristic and is foreign to the unbeliever and dormant in the carnal Christian. 
you know, doing unto others what we would like them to do for us is embedded in Christ's directive to refrain from retaliation, to give freely to others, and to pray for those who mistreat, mistreat us and spitefully use us. So, regardless of how we feel in any given situation, we can offer grace like the grace God extends to us daily. People do not always treat us the way we want to be treated, but that doesn't mean that we cannot stop the right doing the right thing. We should not allow someone to pull us into their web of harshness. You know, our response to God's grace should be to extend it to others. We love because he first loved us. Therefore, let us love others as we are loved. This command is simply simple yet challenging to live out. You know, when others hurt us, it does not have to hearten us. We can become better because of them. It is okay to let ourselves feel the hurt deeply, but instead of toughening up, we can allow God to give us a new perspective, a perspective of empathy, because we understand what hurt and pain feel like so that we can help others. Um, and so, you know, this is what I got from all the hurt and the pain that I suffered and endured from, you know, from my mother, my mother and I relationship, you know, um, constant opposition, you know, it makes loving everyone at all times a much tougher task to accomplish. No matter what I did for my mother, she opposed it. No matter what I did for her, it was an opportunity for her to shoot me down or um, make me feel bad about my gestures of, of kindness. I constantly think about things that would make her happy and purchase them, but she frowns at them. You know, I wanted to escape the agony of defeat, the pain of abandoning ship, and the suffering of not being good enough. So I'm struggling with all of this internally, so bear with me. You know, there is a problem with expectation, expectations of perfection that causes us to feel guilty. If we do not fulfill an imperfect moral obligation, our actions will demonstrate just how deeply guilt and duty regulates our inner well-being. Duty is expected or required of us to do by, by moral or legal obligation. Depending on our culture, traditions, and or values will determine what counts as morally obligatory, which is a principal concern of eth ethics. A moral obligation is something we wish that people should do, which we like or admire them for doing, perhaps dislike or despise them for not doing, but yet admit that they are not bound to the duty. However, in the case of moral injury, which I believe I went through, some caregivers have difficulty believing that <clears throat> we are not bound to the obligation. The word obligation seems to always be defined by someone else that incurs personal liability to bad feelings or adverse reactions. As adults, we have free will to choose what is our moral obligation and should not incur guilt for not doing what is expected of, the, of us to do by others. However, how do we prepare for the effects of caregiving? What cannot be predicted is what we go through in the process of caring. We sometimes falsely paint a picture, a, a, paint a pretty picture of loving to care for a loved one failing to include the drawbacks, hindrances, and hard work of it all. Those things that we hold inwardly that need to be talked about outwardly, the pitfalls of caregiving. You know, every caregiving situation is unique to us and our loved ones. Therefore, every experience may differ. But what happens inside the caregiver may be the same. You know, almost every caregiver experiences stress in one form or another, which makes setting boundaries and self-care unnecessary. Um, what if the one being cared for is very difficult to care for or makes things impossible for us to manage routinely? What if 
this loved one has been challenging throughout our lives and we end up caring for them. You know, sometimes we take on this role of caregiver with expectations based on strong values around caring for our elderly in the home. You know, elders and care caregivers hold to the notion that their adult children should take care of elders in the home. The motivating factor is that the caregiver has a sense of duty and role modeling of parental caregiving passed down through generations. There are overarching motivations of um, reciprocity and obligation for adult children to care for their aging parents. The, this renders a reverse role from parent to child, then child to parent, sort of a payback. You know, in many cases, it is, ex it is expected as a type of insurance that the children would take care of the parent in the future. Even if few resources or expectations have not been transferred from the aging parent, altruism or feelings of intimacy or attachment may motivate adult children to care for their parents. Another motivating factor could be societal or moral obligation where the adult child is expected to care for their aging parents. You know, so in reference to moral injury, these expectations may threaten many caregivers where they begin to die on the inside from the obligations of caring, caring for a loved one. Those invisible wounds that overtake our morals and values that no one can see. The obligation of doing what is right for the one, for the loved one, and the burden, the burden of it or the toll it puts on our life is excruciating internally. The life that belongs to us is no longer our life. The selfless sacrifice we make to ensure the well-being of another can damage our soul. Caring for a parent, you know, goes back to what accentuates from the relationship we had growing up. You know, all we have so many things going on. We harvest the idea of seeking their approval, you know, by doing all we can to make them proud of us or appreciative, whatever the motive, all the while feeling obligated to care for them, even when the demands are overwhelming. These caregivers suffer from moral injury that brings about a struggle in the soul, an unexplainable fight that causes a dangerous level of guilt, shame, loss of identity, and depression. Spiritual symptoms include the following, giving up or questioning morality, spiritual conflict, profound sorrow, deep despair, loss of meaning, loss of caring, anguish, and feeling desperate. A soul divided against itself. So, how do we balance compassion and self-preservation during these times, during all of these emotions, during these feelings. You know, if caregiving does not bring us solace or peace, we need to assess ourselves and confront our feelings. You know, balancing compassion and self-preservation is a delicate tightrope walk that demands introspection, emotional intelligence, and a deep understanding of our own needs. While caregiving is inherently rooted in compassion and selflessness. Um, caring for someone with a history of conflict or strain presents these unique challenges. Understanding the difference between compassion and self-preservation and knowing when to strike a balance. You know, compassion is at the heart of caregiving. Even in difficult relationships, it is the ability to empathize and extend care despite past differences. We might tap into our well of compassion to provide adequate care and, and, and an environment of healing. On the other hand, self-preservation is about protecting our emotional well-being. It involves recognizing our limits and ensuring we do not become emotionally depleted or harmed in caregiving. Now, here are just a few challenges to consider. One... 
When we feel a sense of guilt or obligation to provide care, especially if the care recipient is a family member, setting boundaries and prioritizing self-preservation is difficult. Number two, providing care with challenging relationships can be mostly draining. We might experience um, heightened stress, anxiety, and even resentment. Therefore, balancing compassion with self-preservation becomes crucial to prevent burnout. Number three, clear communication is essential in caregiving, but we must also establish emotional boundaries to protect ourselves from potentially harmful interactions. Number four, we need to recognize and address our own emotional needs. This might involve seeking support from friends, family, or professionals to maintain our well-being. And number five, we might even need to discern when to engage in conversations or situations that could escalate into conflicts. Prioritizing self-preservation might mean avoiding unnecessary confrontations. If caregiving, again, does not provide solace or peace, it is an indicator that our emotional well-being might be compromised. This signals us to step back, assess our feelings, and seek support to address internal conflicts. Please, please, please take heed. In caregiving relationships, it is okay to acknowledge complex um, emotions, including frustration, anger, and even resentment. We have to recognize these emotions that is the first step in finding ways to balance them with compassion. Consult therapists, support groups, or professionals experiencing caregiving dynamics to gain insight into navigating between compassion and self-preservation. Balancing them involves being attuned to your emotions while extending care to someone with a problematic history. It requires constant self-assessment, open communication, and a willingness to adapt your approach to ensure the well-being of the other, um, of the care, you know, care recipient in your peace of mind. So we're at that point for actionable steps. Um, these actionable steps will empower you in caregiving for difficult relationships, facilitating a healthier balance between compassion and self-preservation while evoking growth, understanding, and healing for both parties involved. Addressing past wounds, it can pave the way for greater emotional liberation and more effective caregiving. So the first actionable step is self-reflection and emotional awareness. Take time for self-reflection to understand your emotions and triggers related to the challenging relationship. Acknowledge any lingering resentment, guilt, or unresolved conflicts that might impact your caregiving role. Developing emotional awareness allows you to approach caregiving with a clearer perspective. Step two, establish healthy boundaries. Set clear emotional and physical boundaries that protect your well-being while fulfilling your caregiver responsibilities. Communicate these boundaries with empathy and understanding to the care recipient, ensuring that both parties are on the same page regarding expectations and limitations. Okay, and step three, cultivate forgiveness and healing. While forgiveness might not always be possible or immediate, cultivating a sense of forgiveness and healing can be transformative. This does not mean forgetting past conflicts. Instead, it involves releasing the emotional burden that might hinder you, your caregiving role and personal well-being. Exploring forgiveness can open doors to increase empathy, compassion, and personal growth, ultimately contributing to a more harmonious um, caregiving dynamic. And it is reflection time. As always, I would like to share a motivational quote and an inspirational scripture with you. The first one um, comes from Arnold Schwarzenegger, who said, Strength does not come from winning. Your struggles develop your strength. When you go through hardships and decide not to surrender, that is strength. 
And then our inspiration is drawn from Romans 12, verse 10. And it says, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. So, as we conclude this segment on caregiving for difficult relationships, it's evident that the path of caregiving within complex dynamics is anything but straightforward. We have discussed the complex emotions, the ethical dilemmas, and the balancing act we face when providing care for individuals with a history of challenges. It calls for courage, resilience, and an unwavering commitment to the care recipient's well-being and our own. We find opportunities for growth, forgiveness, and transformation in these complicated relationships. We have explored the nuances of resurfacing emotions, the, the delicate balance between compassion and self-preservation, and the importance of seeking support and guidance. Remember, Providing care within challenging relationships is evidence of our strength, compassion, and capacity for healing. The road might be bumpy, but it is one paved with the potential of deeper understanding, renewed connection, and the forging of unbreakable bonds. May you find solace in the knowledge that your unwavering dedication leaves an enduring imprint on the lives entwined with yours. As we part ways for now, may your journey be illuminated by the strength you carry, the resilience you embody, and the love that guides your every action. Until we reconvene, may you continue to navigate the complexities of caregiving within difficult relationships with a heart full of compassion. May your path be blessed with healing, growth, and the profound impact you bring to those in your care. Take care of yourself, and may you be Surrounded by God's grace. And don't forget to leave a comment, share, like, or subscribe. Subscribe, sorry. Thanks again for listening to Caregiver Chronicles Unveil, Caring for Difficult Relationships. Peace and love.